The Kevoto's Halo Festival is back, beginning with its first part on your mark at Millennium, and with it marks the return of NOAH's and cheerleader Utaha's rerun banners, as well as the introduction of cheerleader Kotori, who is the new unit this time around. Thus, here is a short review of the three units and whether you should pull for them. Let's kick things off with cheerleader Kotori, who has one of the tummies of all time. And since she likes to constantly share fun facts with us, here's one about her. This little belly fat of hers is absolutely, definitely, 100% essential to the law, Or at least according to the base Giga Chat devs. I'm also a big fan of her glow up. She went from a cute unkempt nerd to a cute pretty cheerleading nerd, and I definitely prefer her alt's design. Anyways, she is an explosive AoE DPS striker with blue armor who has D combat power in urban terrains, B in field, and S in indoors. She also rocks the standard DPS equipment set. Her 3 cost EX skill deals damage to enemies in a fan shaped area while knocking them back a certain distance. For her basic skill, after using 5 EX skills other than her own, she increases all allies crit in a round shaped area excluding herself for 30 seconds. Her enhanced skill boosts her attack, and with her sub skill, whenever the crit buff from her basic skill is cast onto an ally, she increases her own attack for 30 seconds, with this effect stacking up to 5 times. At UA40, she gains increased accuracy on her enhanced skill plus, and at UA50, her indoor combat power upgrades to SS. Chia Kotori is a decent raid AoE student, as her EX skill is pretty cheap at the low cost of 3, has good range, and is able to knock back enemies. As such, you can use her in content that require raid AoE units to take out a bunch of raid mobs, such as specific joint firing drills, or perhaps in mission stages if you're a low level player. However, in terms of raids, she currently doesn't see much use, as there aren't exactly any raid raids with mobs other than Raid Armored Grand Assault Cheese when it releases, where you could utilize her since her EX should be able to easily deal with the raid mobs. Other than that, you might be able to use her in the lower difficulties of normal cheese if you're somehow out of options, since Raid does neutral damage against yellow armor. Or perhaps she could also be worth a try in Gregorius, as she could potentially be able to deal with the choir members, though I personally don't think she would be a good fit, since her EX has pretty low multipliers, plus there are other units who are more suitable for this raid. But then again, further testing is definitely needed since that bastard hasn't returned for quite a long time. Overall, while Chia Kotori is an okay raid AoE DPS, in my opinion, gameplay-wise, she isn't worth pulling as there are currently many other raid AoE units in the game, such as Akari, Mutsuki, or even Aru, whom you can use instead, since A, they are easier to get and farm for, and B, they perform better than Chia Kotori cause they can dish out more damage. Thus, they are able to clear out raid mobs more effectively. Hence, I would personally say she is a hard skip. Again, of course, unless she is your waifu, and you just love that little belly fat of hers. And you really just want to correct her by putting a baby in that tummy. But the question has to be asked, who has the better tummy? Kotori or Swimsuit Saki? Now we move on to our favourite Meister, cheerleader Utaha, who has one of the coolest halos in the game, in my opinion, and she honestly deserves more love and is such an underrated waifu. Plus, I especially love that long purple ponytail. She is a mystic DPS striker with blue armor who has the same terrain moods as her clubmate, cheerleader Kotori. Coincidentally, they also share the same equipment set. Cheerleader Utaha has a 5 cost EX skill, where she enhances Best Boy Thunder Gun for 90 seconds, upgrading its normal attack to deal more damage while changing the trigger condition for her basic skill. Speaking of which, her basic skill before using her EX allows her to deal damage to one enemy every 30 seconds. After using her EX to augment her turret, her basic skill changes, and she deals damage to one enemy every 6 normal attacks instead, while having a higher multiplier. Her attack increases with her enhanced skill, and she deals additional damage to enemies inflicted with a debuff on her sub skill. At UA40, she also gains attack speed on her enhanced skill plus, and at UA50, her indoor combat power improves from S to SS. 
With a turret, cheerleader Utaha is primarily an auto attacker DPS or AA, and she's a pretty strong one at that. As even though she doesn't offer much utility, her main focus is delivering pure raw DPS through her normal attacks by activating her skills. Firstly, with her EX, Thunder Gun's normal attacks become more powerful. Not to mention, it actually lasts for quite long, at a total duration of 90 seconds. Meaning, you don't have to keep using it throughout the battle. To simplify things for this next part, I will refer to Cheerleader Utaha's basic skill before using her EX as BS1, and the basic skill after using her EX as BS2. Got it? Okay. After using her EX, it changes BS1 to BS2, which triggers every 6 normal attacks, allowing Utaha to activate it more often as she doesn't have to wait for a whole 30 seconds but rather for Thunder Gun to land 6 normal attacks. BS2 can also be activated more frequently once C Utaha reaches UA40, since she gains additional attack speed, which subsequently allows her to hit the 6 normal attacks threshold faster and more often. Moreover, because BS2 deals more damage compared to BS1, it helps contribute to Utaha's damage output. All of these make cheerleader Utaha very much usable in raids like Gauss and Shirokuro, where you can use her in one of your insane or torment teams, as she acts purely as a passive blue DPS unit, dishing out as much damage through her normal attacks and basic skill once her EX is activated. You could also possibly try her out in Blue Armored Grand Assault Hieronymus, but that obviously remains to be seen. Overall, while cheerleader Utaha is a rather strong blue DPS and AA student, in my opinion, she is pretty skippable. As for one, she requires a lot of investment, aka minimum UE40, to be fully effective in higher difficulty raids as the extra attack speed she receives at that level greatly improves her damage output. Not only that, she isn't as strong as some other AA units like Sakurako or regular Izuna, and you can opt to use them instead, especially since Izuna is farmable. Finally, there are also other blue DPS alternatives who are way stronger than Chia Utaha, such as Maid Aris, Wakamo, and Trek Hasumi. Hence, if you have them or any other blue DPS units that I didn't mention, then you can use them to replace her. However, you can pull for her if you have a lack of blue DPS options or if she's your waifu, and you want to give her a taste of your Thunder Gun, if you catch my drift. Finally, we have Semina's secretary, Noah. But for some reason, while I am an absolute sucker for white hair girls, they can do things to me, I am surprisingly not that attracted to Noah. But I still like her, so Noah fans, please don't send a pipe bomb in my mail. She is a mystic support striker with blue armor, who somehow also has the same terrain moods as both cheerleader Kotori and cheerleader Utaha. For her equipment, she runs boots, pin, and amulet, all of which helps improve her survivability, which is very important since she is a support student. Her 3 cost EX skill decreases an enemy's defense for 40 seconds, while also applying the focus assault debuff on them, ensuring your students target that one specific enemy. She deals damage to one enemy every 30 seconds with her basic skill, her enhanced skill increases her max HP, and for her sub skill, whenever her basic activates, her debuff retention is increased for 13 seconds, meaning that the debuff she applies will last longer. At UA40, she receives more attack on her enhanced skill plus, and at UA50, her indoor combat power converts from S to SS. One of Noah's main appeals is the defense down debuff that she applies through her EX skill, as she has a pretty high shred value of around 40% at max level, which is slightly more than Akane's 37% and Swimsuit Shiroko's 34%. Not only that, her defense break lasts for a whole 40 seconds, compared to Akane's and Swimsuit Shiroko's 30 seconds, and it can be made even longer through her sub skill. As such, the optimal method would be to use her EX after her basic skill activates, since it will increase the duration of her defense break. This makes her an excellent unit for raid bosses with absurdly high defense, like the best snake boy in every sensei's pants and dress Hina's personal punching bag. 
as you can use her in one of your insane or torment teams, since her main role is to simply decrease their defense so that your other units can deal more damage. Other than that, the Focus Assault debuff on her EX is also one of her main selling points, as there are only a few units in the game who can actually apply that debuff. This allows her to help in situations where you need your students to attack a specific enemy. And obviously, I'm talking about that damn infuriating magician cat. No, not Morgana, I'm talking about Gauze. This debuff is especially useful in phase 2 of this raid as it lets your students attack the real Gauze. If you're new to the game and unfamiliar with the Gauze raid, allow me to briefly explain. In phase 2, the fucking smiling cat creates two other clones of himself who do not take any damage. And you can identify which is the real one by looking at the color of the cards when they spawn. Black equals real, red equals fake. From there, you need your students to attack the actual gauze. As remember, attacking the clones does nothing to his health bar since they are basically invincible. Unfortunately, it's something your students won't usually do, unless you move them in front of the real one or if you plant the focus assault debuff on him. Thus, simply use Noah's EX on the correct cat and your students will start shooting him. Which is why units like Noah and Summer Izuna and Sakurako are all extremely useful for this raid. Overall, Noah is a pretty good unit, and among these three banners, she is the one most worth pulling for, and you could consider getting her if she's your waifu, and I know there are tons of Noah enjoyers out there, or if you don't have her and you have an excess of paroxines. However, you may skip this banner if you already have her or if you possess Swimsu Izuna or Sakurako, as you can just use either of them to plant the Focus Assault debuff. Not only that, in terms of her defense break, you can just bring in Akane instead, who is actually much more preferred even in blue or red binner. Since her EX has a lower cost, she is easily obtainable, and you can simply get more of her LFs through the Total Assault store. Lastly, I would recommend pulling on track Yuka's banner instead, which is one of the featured banners next week. Because gameplay-wise, I personally feel that Track Yuka is way 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 more valuable and is a must-pull unit compared to Noah, especially if you don't have the former yet. As not only is she limited, she is also one of the best tanks and most flexible healers in the game, since she can reposition your units while providing them with beefy shields at the low cost of 3, allowing her to be used in a lot of content. And that is why I would recommend you save for Track Yuka instead. But again, if you still want to pull for Noah, go ahead. Your paroxines, your rules. But remember, Gomen Yuka. And that's all for the review. All in all, I would personally advise you to skip both cheerleader Kotori and cheerleader Utaha, as there are other students who can easily replace the both of them. But again, if they are your waifus, you can obviously just pull for them. As for Noah, while you definitely could pull for her if you don't already have her, and you have a surplus of paroxines, or maybe she's your waifu, in my opinion, you should pull for Trek Yuka instead, especially if you don't have her, since I believe that she has more value, plus come on man, let Yuka win just this once alright? I feel bad for her cause of the Gomen Yuka memes. Anyways, that is all from me, let me know who you'll be pulling for if you are, and I'll see y'all in the next one.